Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Dark Diaspora Africa Renaissance channel. I'm your host, Ego. I've got with me Namdi. What's up, Namdi? Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Great, great, great. Uh, thank you all for those. I see Coco Brown is already in the um, chat room. Uh, I see Black Girl Magic. Okay, I think there'll be some dimension for that as well in this topical conversation. Uh, it's found to be an interesting one. So please like, share, subscribe, um, and um, yeah, do participate as well. Um, gonna take different dimensions and um, hopefully we can get your your points, uh, concerns, issues, questions, uh, contribution. So um, and for all those who joined recently, thank you for joining. Um, please go back and look at our catalog. And uh, offer any suggestions, what you think you like, tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. And yeah, um, hit the notification bell as well um, to get notif uh, notified of our new upcoming shows. So here we talk about various issues on the continent, um, things to do with um, politics, economics, social issues, uh, culture, history, science, uh, uh, family. You know, Anything we generally talk about, mostly with an art, uh, envisioning the future, looking at Africa through a global uh, 3D um, new lens, uh, and tying in um, uh, you know facts, figures, and discussion and dialogue in the future, trying to project uh, where we're going. In essence, the, the Renaissance of the continent. Um, so, without any further ado. The topic's called Girl Child Program. Uh, what about the boy child? So, um, this came to my uh, attention. We were talking about it offline. Um, there are a lot of girl child um, programs run by numerous, um, I guess, uh, international organizations on the continent, charity organizations in conjunction with various governments uh, on the continent, um, whereby they are trying to ensure that the girl child is not left behind, they are educated, um, uh, trying to address issues such as um, um, girls being left out of school, girls not being allowed to go to school due to religion. There's an echo somewhere. No, I don't think so. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so girl, girls being left out of school, um, some get um, due, due to sometimes child marriages, uh, being married early uh, in some parts of, you know, uh, the Islamic part of Africa in particular, but not only the Islamic part, but in general, the Islamic parts of Africa. Um, uh, girls being left out due to uh, lack of opportunities, being put into uh, uh, trades, um, um, and generally not having uh, uh, availability of, or access to schools um, or being discouraged as well to go to school. And this has, has a wider implication uh, of them eventually down the line getting into um, places of employment uh, and leadership positions and being affected in that way. Now, I'll share my screen to just a few examples of some of those institutions um that i'm speaking of so there we go so uh, if you just put in some like child girl child programs in africa you see uh so many organizations that come up there's asante africa uh, amigos.org help african children break the cycle of poverty there's always a an angle or element of, of alleviating poverty as well um so there's plan international organization there's an um, acfe group um, World Bank is a. They also have um, um, different programs they, that they have. Camfed, um, Girl Not You want to ex expand the screen? You want to expand your screen so I can see clear. Can see clear. Can see clearly. Uh, so, how about now? No. no. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So. Uh, ASEC, uh, SLDI, Advancing the Girl Child. Um, lots of research has been written, Develop Africa, Empowering Girls, uh, Age Concern, um, 
Global Partnership, U, U, United Nations, Girl Child Foundation, there's so many of them, Action Aid, and the list goes on, there are pages and pages and pages of, of these organizations all for the same purpose. Now, I wanted to bring up one of them. So, so Empowering Girls, um, the goal, I think, of this uh, particular organization is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Um, so they have sustainable development goals, end all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere, eliminate all forms of violence against all women and girls in public spaces and uh, private spheres, eliminate harmful practices such as uh, early or forced marriage, marriages, female genital mutilation, recognize value and unpaid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, infrastructure and social protection policies, etc. Ensure women's full and act effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political, economic, and public life. So the list goes on and on. There are many, many organizations like this. And um, I'll also highlight the uh, United Nations or UNICEF have theirs as well. The same thing. They have, uh, let me get it here. They have, um, their own programs uh, for the girls, <coughs> excuse me, girls education. So here it is. So here uh, it says out of approximately 31 million girls of primary school age, this is globally, by the way, um, 17 million are expected to never enroll in school in Arab states and Sub-Saharan Africa, almost two out of three out of school girls are expected to never go into school. Of the world's 650 million primary school age children, uh, let me expand this in case you cannot see. Okay. Uh, out of 650 million primary school age children, at least 250 million are not learning the basics in reading and mathematics, many of whom are girls. Uh, despite recent advances uh, in generations of women have been left behind, 493 million adult women are illiterate and account for almost two thirds of the world's 774 million illiterate adults. So basically this goes into breaking down the issues that exist with what is in a nutshell, uh, women's um, underrepresentation or exclusion or, or issues barring them from um, having access to education and uh, opportunities in the long term. So on the face of all that, uh, they are a good thing. Um, these programs uh, seek to help address these issues and support the individual countries who are having issues with uh, with trying to get the the girls um, on a kind of parity with the boys. Um, I'll read this last one and I'll go into the other side of the argument. So, um, UNESCO, this is, they have made a report. I think which year was this? This was in. Uh, uh, we're looking back at 25 years since they started to um, um, target this um, issue. Um, so the report uh, showed that, uh, or highlighted what they were trying to do. So eliminate gender disparity in the education process. Um, all pregnant girls and young parents must be supported to go to school. All teachers and school and career counselors must have training to prevent negative gender stereotypes spilling into teaching and students' subject choices. Um, I'll read this part. Globally, the percentage of females studying engineering or ICT is below 25% in over two thirds of countries, and the share of women in technical and vocational education declined from 45% in 1995 to 42% in 2013. So few women pursue careers in ICT. Um, all curriculum and textbooks must represent females in a way that does not perpetuate gender stereotypes. All students must have access to comprehensive sexuality education, which has been shown to prevent school-related gender-based violence by promoting and understanding the respect of students' gender identities. It also leads to a reduction of the prevalence of early pregnancies, and then also to encourage more women in leadership positions to help change social and gender norms and act as a role model for students, um, so, et cetera. So I'll stop there for a moment. Let me stop sharing my screen. So basically that just sets the outline of 
how these um, schemes um, have basically entered the African um, continent through working with various governments themselves and ministries. And, uh, and it also has impacts on NGOs, international community open organizations, things like Action Aid, which I'll speak about again. Um, so it's so all good and well. But there's two potential issues I see with that. One, there's now been a neglect or under uh, attention given to the male child. Um, and at the same time, I feel, and this is part of the discussion, that some of the uh, agenda behind these projects um, are also a bit, so to speak, in, could be insidious. Um, I say that because a lot of it is talking about, as I read before, to address social norms, to change social norms. So um, things like gender are being introduced through that aspect. Uh, um, um, the, the United Nations is working with governments to try to enforce certain, uh, I guess, parallels in the way people should be represented. Um, nothing is taken away from women having all the opportunities and girls have opportunities that men have. But the stipulations that are being discussed look to me that they have some undertone or underlying uh, agenda that's leaning towards what I would say in a nutshell is a, a kind of feminist agenda, a Western feminist agenda in particular. And we know how that's happened in the West in an overrepresentation of those issues and a neglect of the boys. Now, boys face very particular issues on the continent. Some of them are also left destitute, they're more likely to be homeless. Um, they also drop out of school, drop out of school at, at, uh, at larger rates than girls whilst they're in school. Um, when there's war, uh, when war breaks out, a lot of them are actually drafted into war, a lot more male or boy child soldiers than women or than girls. Um, and I, I think when I searched in, in, for a lot of boy programs, I literally couldn't really find any. So, so I'm now looking what would happen in the future. Uh, we're, we're, we could potentially see um, a an amassing of, of of issues that could build up over time that have not been addressed for the boys, but instead addressed only for the girls. Now both have issues, and the girls find there's a deficit that needs to be addressed. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to to start that conversation off to see is there an issue. Is the boy child being neglected? Um, is there an insidious, uh, I guess, feminist, Western feminism creep behind this? Uh, or is it just, you know, something that we should all uh, get behind and support? So, Andy, what do you think? Well, I don't think that, well, I don't really think there's any evidence that, that really matches that um, your, your concern. I think, uh, um culturally historically and even educationally um women in africa have been placed at a disadvantage um and all these programs that you mentioned are just the programs that are that are just been introduced to address the deficits and um so if we look at you know, a lot of african, african society are largely patriarchal and um and as such you know access to education for women access to um, leadership position, access to, you know, social amenities uh, are a bit of a struggle for a lot of women. So programs like this, like this, have been introduced to address those deficiencies. And I think it's a welcome development. I I see okay. your concern. I mean, I understand your concern about 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 potentially there could be you know some form of like Western feminist creep into it, but. Um, but I, from my own perspective, I don't actually think there's any risk to that mm -hmm. at this moment. I think that um, for, you to, for you to measure the progress of a society, you need to look at the way the society treats women. You know, for you to actually measure how progressive society can be, it should be, it should look like the way that society treats women. And um, these programs that have been introduced, how many programs that are those seeks to address that deficiency? I mean, if you look at like I said, the data, 
the data doesn't actually stack up for a lot of countries. It doesn't actually stack up that, you know, the disconcerts that you've just raised. You know, <clears throat> like Toko Brown said, most of African countries are run by men, and she, she's right. And they have they have the most power in Africa, not females. That's why these programs are needed. Yeah, I totally agree with that. In a lot of African countries, uh, a lot of Western countries are run by men. Sorry? A lot of Western countries are run by men. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Western countries are run by men. Yes, but we're talking about access, access, you know, the access that these, these women have, access to leadership position, access to education, you know, access to education, access to leadership position, access to programs, social programs. I don't think just develop them, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, limited or even pieces that largely absent, largely due to cultural or religious reasons. So, so okay, exactly. let, let's go by that a bit then. If, 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 um, f first of all, the, the patriarchal, let, let me go by the patriarchal, because Western societies are patriarchal as well, l largely, but we don't have these programs over, over here. So why are they coming to do them over in Africa? Which is not my question. If it's about patriarchy, I, I don't think it's about patriarchy. Um, you know, China, Russia, UK, US you know, is a largely patriarchal society. Um, on the other hand, we have Rwanda where they have gender parity 50 50 with their government, same in, in the people in high positions in other parts of Africa as well, uh, ministerial, etc. So, um, I, I don't think that would be the issue. And I think when it comes to access for, for education, I mean, what does that mean, access? Uh, girls applying to school and they're turning them back. I don't think that's the case. I don't think they're saying you can't go to school. Uh, I, I, I don't think that is. I know for sure when they are pregnant, then they don't let them go to school after turning. That is an issue. Um, I, I think that's an issue. So that's something that's being addressed. Yes, but in general, just access in general. I don't. I don't think that's um that, that's a, that's a, a, a real issue or problem. And in any case, why are Western organizations um focusing so heavily because a lot of the lists i went through a lot of them are western organizations why, why are they involved what what, what is the what is the what is the intention why why are they trying to um uh intervene in in in, in those kind of affairs in african and on the african continent in particular uh, that's my question Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat that again? Can you repeat I that said, again? Sorry. Okay, I said I don't believe it's um it's it's a patriarchal issue. I, I because because most Western countries are still patriarchal largely. Um but we have an over over subscription or over representation of these international agencies or, or, or charitable organizations or international organizations on the continent all promoting the same thing. And, and I'm, 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 my, my worry is, is as they're doing this, the, the intention is to relegate the, the male child. By doing so, it's, it's going to relegate the male child. But, but there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no evidence for that. There's no evidence that that's the male child is going to be relegated. There's no evidence for that. There is, if, if you don't have any, any kind of program for no... a child, and you have an over-representation of, of over-provision on, on one side, naturally that would happen. And again, again, you can, you can see it um, even here, even in Western countries, you, you can see it too. I mean, if, I mean, if you look at this data I'm sharing now, it just shows you the breakdown, the gender breakdown for um you know high school education from different regions in the world so you can see and this is, this is from the world bank okay so this is from the world bank so you can see from europe and central asia you can see the male to female ratio you can see east asia east asia and pacific middle east and north africa latin america and the caribbean you can see south africa is the lowest in the world but specifically if you look at the gender parity between male and female in sub-saharan africa you can see the data for that for women is significantly lower than that of men. I mean, 
but some Southern Africa generally is slow. I mean, slow as it well. But for that, for girls, sorry, that doesn't look lower. That for Where girls. Is no, look, yeah. look at the data and look. That's for female. Female is the light blue, and that for male is the darker blue. So you yeah, can yeah, see that the share of the share of secondary school, the second the share of secondary school education, which is uh, equivalent to high school, you know, in, in in the United States, enrolled for vocational program for females. You can see that for male is greater than five, but that for female what is about less than five. So that for females is even lower. That's one. Number two. If you look at the uh, the gender um, um, enrollment for breakdown for various African countries, yeah, you can see that for Cameroon, yeah, you can see, see the divide. I mean, some some countries, obviously, some countries in Africa are doing better than others. So, so there's like there's like a mixed bag. So you can see for Cameroon, so you have higher enrollment for vocational education for women in Cameroon in Congo. In Rwanda, but you see, but some other countries like Mozambique, uh, like uh, like Mali, um, like Togo, like Seychelles. I mean, look at Seychelles. I mean, look at the data for Seychelles. It's extremely low, even for Ghana. Look at Ghana. But most in importantly, you can if you look at countries that have socialist leanings. This is the data I wanted to show you now. If you look at countries that have socialist leanings, like Guinea, you can see that the vocational enrollment for women. Is even larger than that of men. You can see another country that has socialist leanings like um, um, like Niger, like Angola. You know, Angola had a, 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 a Marxist and socialist government operational in the country there in the 70s and the 80s. I think even up to now they still have. You can see that for women, for um, for girl enrollment, vocational enrollment, uh, um, gender parity for male and female. That for girls is even higher than that of boys. Okay, so with those with those few exceptions, generally you can see enrollment for for uh, for 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 girls for vocational education on the continent is extremely low. I mean, look look at Tanzania, look at the Comoros, look at Chad, Lesotho. I mean, I can go on and on and on. You know, overall you can see from this data that the, 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 there is a gap between male and female. This is data. Look at data here. The obvious gap between, and this deficiency has to be addressed. This deficiency has to be addressed. Hence, the rollout of some of these programs. So these programs are geared towards addressing the deficiency. And finally, I said, I said, um, women are more, women are less likely. So girls are less likely than men to study STEM careers. So again, this is the breakdown again for, for various African countries. So business, education, and law. You see that that has a very high. Um, uh, um, female representation um, for healthcare. Um, well, also okay, that that equally has a high um, female representation. Of obviously, we know a lot of nurses, the nurses on the African continent, over ninety percent, or if not well over ninety-five percent of the nurses in Africa are predominantly female, compared to the West here, where you have, you know, a certain percentage of men who are equally equally nurses. Education, yes. You know, a large number of women on the African continents are largely teachers and even lecturers in higher institution. Arts and humanity, as an area also that is not largely dominated by, by 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 girls. But in the sciences, so engineering, manufacturing, and construction, you see those areas are still largely dominated by boys. Okay, this is the data coming out from Africa. So you can see the data for engineering, uh, manufacturing, and construction is still largely dominated by the natural sciences. Man, uh, mathematics and statistics is also an area that is still large. So STEM also is another area where you have significant female deficiency in on the African continent. And this is another area where some of all these programs are being rolled out on the continent seek to address. So, there's, so there are all this funding and all this training that has been put in tertiary education, in primary education, or even at the, at the university levels, I get to us addressing some of all these issues. You know? So, is it is it really an issue? It is an issue. It is, like I said, you know, you know, until until until, uh, until like I said, you see, there are women in STEM, but you know, 
are they, you know, are, are, you know, are they, are they, do they have access to the kind of opportunities that men have access to, men that have access to STEM? That's the issue. I think these programs are geared towards encouraging women to go into STEM, encouraging mm. more women to go into STEM. Currently now, STEM is largely dominated by, by boys on the African continent. So, so is construction, so is architecture. Towards, sorry? Okay, it, it, it doesn't mean that they're being excluded because because there's an over. No, no, no. I never said anything about them being excluded. I'm talking about these programs that just geared towards encouraging more women to go into STEM. They're not saying that women don't have access to STEM. There are women who are in STEM, okay, in in Africa, but they're just there towards encouraging more women to have access to go into this program. That's all. Just to maximize uh, the gender balance. In the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the in the why is that normal that in your country a foreign organization is going to come and dump money into programs? Some of these organizations are not necessarily to encourage uh, an increase or decrease the representation here, or not representation here in different aspects of the education system. Why 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 is that a normal thing to 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 accept or, or to to do? Some of these organizations that, that, that fund these programs, some of them are non, not necessarily foreign. Some of them are indigenous. Some of them are indigenous. For example, the African, the African Union as a whole has programs that are catered to the needs of women. The African Union has a, 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 a department called the, uh, the WGDD, which is the Women, Gender and Development Directorate, that is responsible for leading, guiding, defending and coordinating the African Union's efforts for gender equality and development and promoting women empowerment by ensuring African countries comply with the AU solemn declaration on gender equality. You know, so there are various programs, not just on the international level, but at the continental level that seeks to address this issue. Even at the national level, various African countries have, have uh, uh, programs that are catered. Even some countries, like I know about Nigeria, has, you know, like ministries that are dedicated exclusively for women. At the continental level, there is an AU strategy for gender equality and women empowerment. You know, so I think one of the reasons why I think these programs are pertinent, we need to look at the barriers that that girls, you know, the girl child on that goes on the African continent. What are the various barriers, you know, that that ex that exacerbates the need for some of these programs, you know, at the national and even at the continental or even international levels? One of one of them is poverty. Yeah. So even if education is free, the cost of uniforms and supply can make education for girls inaccessible. But, but so it's we, the have lack, we have we have we have we have lack of safe and private uh, 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 lack, lack of safe space and even uh, 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 and even um, access to um, uh, access to you know public um, facilities, public. Uh, Toilet facilities. A lot of, as you know, a lot of the schools on the continent are still largely public, and as such, some of them don't actually have safe space for girls who, you know, who, uh, you know, who require private space for them to, you know, either to go change or for them to, you know, especially those who are in their teenage years who are experiencing um, um, their various pre uh, period. So there's a, there's a, there's a stigma. And other factors that, that affect um, those kind of girls who don't have access to those kind of uh, places, you know. Another barrier also is, is gender inequality. Girls are often kept in Africa. Girls are often kept at home from schools, you know, in order to help with family care and housework. So the disperception in some African um, societies that you know girls are not supposed to be, you know, um, girls are not supposed to get the kind of education that boys have. Girls are just supposed to be at home, um, cook, clean, and take, take care of a man, and just have babies. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of there's still a lot of communities that still have. And these are the barriers that that um, girls on the continent have to undergo. Child marriage, obviously, you know about child marriage and early pregnancy. So child brides are often always forced to drop out of schools. You know, girls, some girls are actually, um, say, underage girls are often married off and as such. They may be unable to complete their education, you know, or some of them might even get pregnant. These are, these are the, the barriers. Men don't have those kind of barriers, you know, violence, and you have violence. Yeah, you know? but men have other barriers. 
That's what I'm saying. All of this kind of You have violence, for example. So once once arriving at school, those barriers exist and they should be addressed. But you can't have policies. I said I've I've searched for many regarding boys. And those things can, can be done in conjunction with dealing with other issues that young boys face on the continent. That's that's my thing. And I, I'm just worried that because these things have been going on for some time, I think 20 years, especially when you look at the United Nations, AU, a lot of these organizations have existed and they, they've been proliferating and spreading. So what, what what's happening is I'm not seeing any that is addressing young boys. And young boys are going through, they have specific needs that they need to be that they need to address as well. As um, um, Coco Brownie mentioned, something high hyper masculinity is the problem in Africa. That's why some boys um, just get ignored if they aren't aggressive enough. They get left to the, to the wayside. Um, I, I'm not really sure what the, that term hyper masculinity means. To be honest. Um, well, I, I, I guess I just have to. I don't. Look I, at much well, I, don't I, mean, I don't actually think there's any concern. I think. I think these programs are in order. I think they are just they are geared towards addressing the gender deficiency. I think that the, the programs are in um, in order. A lot of African societies are largely patriarchal, and this places a lot of girls at a disadvantage. These programs, and I've shown some of the data that mm, shows the gaps. I've shown I've shown I've shown the gaps. I've shown the gaps. Okay, keep let's keep patriarchy aside. I've shown data. Mm. That illustrate the gaps that exist at the educational level. Let's just even let's look at the educational level. Let's look at that. Gaps, gaps that exist, exist in every educational system across the world. There are gaps everywhere. So we can't say it's because again, that's why I highlight the STEM. STEM STEM is, is across the world, not oversubscribed by women. That's just a general thing. It's just a general yeah, thing. Yeah, but, 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 but there's a there's a there's a there's a clamor now to get more women involved in STEM because STEM, as you know, is the future. Okay, so they don't want it to be an area that's predominantly dominated by men. So they're encouraging more women. It's a way of encouraging more women. You know, like I I I I highlighted some of the positions that are traditionally dominated by women. So you have like the laws, the business administration, the nursing, and the healthcare. But in the sciences, we don't get to see a lot of men in the sciences or girls in the sciences. So all these programs are just there to us encouraging more girls to go into the sciences. That's just is it, is it, I don't say anything wrong there. I don't say anything wrong. They don't they're not stopping girls from going into the sciences. It's just a way of encouraging them. They have areas that are that are traditionally dominated by girls in Africa. Like I mentioned, I talk about the business administration, you know, the accountancy and other social science uh, subject areas. But in the sciences, we don't get, and in the engineering area, in the engineering sphere, we don't get to see a lot of girls in those areas. So it just get towards encouraging them to, you know, to become more active in those areas. There's nothing there. It's maximizing the, uh, you know, the the, the 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 contributions of the of both gen. Nothing there. I know. I I understand the concerns that you you are raising about, you know, the the, the possible. Hello. Little of that could be, you know, being a bit at the moment. You understand? I don't think there's any risk at the moment. So, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So you, you, you broke you broke up your pictures from. Um, yeah. see, 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 see what the risks. Yeah, see, see what the risks are. Um, when we look at the black community. In the West, the United States, in Europe, other parts, um, a lot, a lot of um, and this is aside. Again, I, I'm stressed that addressing um, child uh, pregnancy, addressing female genital mutilation, um, um, uh, refusing um, access to to school education, all those things should be addressed. I have no problem with that whatsoever. My thing is is the conflict of not addressing the boy child's issue and what that may portend for the future when you now um, bring those women in, into contact with the men when they get older. I, I highlight that because we look at the West, we look at Europe and, and, and just the West in general, the black community is pretty much, the genders are divided because there's been an emphasis here obviously on feminism and the women 
and elevating them once they've been able to, to gain access to certain um, um, status as well to compete with the men. It's not saying no one should have access, but I'm talking about the mindset that has, has come out. There's a big conflict now with men and women, the black community outside the continent, where divorce rates are the highest, uh, um, um, lots of, of increased um, um, societal issues and a breakdown in the fabric of society in general. I'm now worried that with this specific targeting, that that's what's going to happen on the continent uh, in, in the future in like a decade from now, because there's nothing to address the also um, needed uh, um, um, upliftment and, 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 and assuring that those young boys are not excluded from school, are also given their own opportunities to, to further the education, because a lot of people end up not finishing school. Again, as I said, boys don't end up finishing school. A lot of them don't. A lot of them get taken into more menial um, practice and labor. Some get into more crimes and get more arrested. Some get drawn into conflicts, um, uh, uh, terrorist groups, and things like that due to, due to a lack of education. And we see it in the Sahel, in, in those Islamic parts, and in surgery. These are also young boys without access to education. But I don't see the same programs or amount of programs targeting that. That's what I'm saying. I don't see the same program targeting issues that. that you, issues that you're raising are valid issues, but they are diaspora issues. They are not issues that are affecting the African continent at the moment. They are valid issues. I get that. But they are not issues that are affecting the Africa right now. They are not. So I don't think, again, I don't think we should be worried about What we should be worried now is how do we address the, the, the gender deficiency? How do we provide access to a lot of the women who are largely still, you know, living in areas in Africa that are still largely deprived. I mean, look at this data, the percentage of young women, okay? And this is taken from the OECD. The, the percentage of young women that are married up before they turn 18. I mean, I mean, look at look at this stat. The stats are shocking. I mean, look at the stats for DJ. 76% of girls between 20 and 24 are married up before they turn 28, before they turn, um, before they turn uh, 18. 76 percent for that of Chad is 68 percent for that of Mali is 55. These are shocking statistics. Okay, so if the girls are married off before they turn 18, I mean, what's the future for them? What's the what you know? What's the access? What you know? Access to social services. You know, you know, it's not just to get married, but you know, access to social services. You know, access to family planning, access to even adult educational system uh, services for them in these countries are. Uh, and literally limited. The boys or the men just go ahead and still continue to plow ahead with their, you know, with their with their careers and their educational pursuit. But the women definitely in these countries suffer from a disadvantage. Again, I'm just showing the data that you know that suggests that these programs and this in the whether they are national, they are continental, or they are international, are in order. I support them fully. Again, I understand where you're coming from about the need for these programs to abuse and you know be, and begin to alter the the gender um, balance that we you know we currently are seeing in the west and now have little um, implications in the wider society i understand that but I, I i don't think currently you know at the rate at the at the pro, at the stage we are in on the continent i don't think that there there is need for us to to worry ourselves for that for, for that right now Right now, I think the, the emphasis should be on how we're going to, you know, provide access um, for girls and make sure that those girls are properly safe in schools. That a lot of the barriers that I've talked about that prevents girls from, you know, from maximizing and attaining their full potential is limited and addressed. You know, okay. uh, I, I think, I think just we're married we're off, we're just married off like some kind of like commodity. I don't think girls, girls should be married off like some kind of commodity and also. Um, the, the 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 ability for them to actually develop themselves now becomes restricted or limited. You know, these are cultural issues. These are okay. cultural, issues. and in these societies, are often religious that needs to be addressed. Okay, I, I, I think I, no, I think you need to get that, that map off because I think it's a bit misleading. But someone looking at that would say forty three percent of girls in Nigeria are married up before, and I I don't think that that's that's what that that illustrates. I think you need to get it up. It must have been a survey. Uh, on a on a number a specific number, so I think we need to give a background behind that. But that just looks on the face of it like 
fifty percent of it. Could you put it up again, please? Okay. I don't want us to have a, a different um, take from that. So, so what's what's the background? What, what what does it say around it? Could you zoom out so we can okay. see? Because I don't think it's seventy seventy six percent uh of the whole niger population that, that, that that's done this it's just um hold on in the world's children can you zoom out just to see the background behind this no i don't think i can this west african girls married off too young it's from the OECD. Okay. The, the one for nigeria is the one in Nigeria is, is, is plausible, especially in northern in the northern part of Nigeria, where girls are married off early. Well, are, maybe in the southern part of Nigeria, maybe not so much. But you can see, you know, countries like Benin, Togo, and Ghana is a lot lower. But if you notice one thing, these countries that have a significant high number of girls that are married off at a very young age, they are predominantly Muslim. So Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Chad. These countries are predominantly Muslim in the northern part of Nigeria. A predominantly Muslim, and you know there is a perception in 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 in, in countries, uh, in Islamic countries in Africa, where women are married off at a very young age, as as early as eighteen, they are married off, they are married off, and by nineteen they already start having children. When they start having children, that's it. That's it for them. That's a wrap. They can't access. They can't have access to education. They can't develop themselves any further. These are facts. Fine. Okay, we can argue about the data. You can say that the data are, it may, might be be inflated, but this is what happens in these countries, especially in countries that have a significant high number of uh, high a high Islamic uh, uh, population. So we can't dispute that. No, no, you, no you, you can't dispute that. I think, again, the program should be in place to address those issues. What I'm saying is when you have all these programs in place and there's nothing for the boys, the boys have their own specific issues that are not necessarily the same. Again, a lot of child soldiers are boys. Um, a lot of boys drawn into um, conflicts such as um, insurgency, uh, um, terrorism, um, Crime. The boys, the boys on the continent, the boys on the continent have a natural advantage, cultural, historical, and even religious advantage. Do you agree with that? The boys on the African continent. I, I, have, explain what do you mean? Okay, so he's so so cultural. Again, there's a perception that uh, on the continent, on the continent, that you know, boys are supposed to have access to education, like I mentioned, in a, in a lot of African society. It's a perception that boys are supposed to have access to education and and girls are you know are just supposed to you know have access to education but not to the extent of boys so girls at some point just have to just confine themselves to into cooking cleaning taking care of a man and just having babies no i don't agree with that i haven't seen that no, in the law of africa is still there yes in, in some societies this belief has largely been uh, you know uh, this belief or this concept of largely uh, evaporated or you know been eradicated, but in some, especially in rural areas, in rural areas and and like I mentioned, in countries that are still um, predominantly Islamic on the continent, these beliefs are there. That's the truth. The beliefs are still there. There are people who still hold these beliefs. I think okay. all it boils down to so poverty. so from a cultural and from a religious, especially those who do it from a, the belief. That religiously, that men should hold those positions and women should take a natural back seat. Okay, so they do yeah. that for and religious reasons. In general, okay. I said, in general, I, I don't see. And I've given, and I've given you, I've given you religious and cultural reasons as to why boys naturally have a head start than girls when compared to girls on the, on, on on the continent. But boys have a natural head start, and the data that I've shown. So, you know, I've shown Proves it. The data shows that boys naturally have a head start. The data don't no. lie. Yes. Oh, oh. We see in socialist countries. We see in socialist countries like Mozambique. Yeah, like socialist countries like Mozambique, like Guinea, countries who have, you know, socialist even Ethiopia. I think to a large extent, Ethiopia. You can see that there's some level of gender parity, and you can even see it even manifest in their society. You know, this 
African Union is, um, initiative about you know African countries trying to, to balance um, their gender representation in, in in government and leadership position. Ethiopia is one of the countries that are picked up on that. I mean, we know Rwanda all equally is doing is doing a lot of work in that regard. But yeah, okay. Well, no, I've so, not, I know they're not there yet. I I, won't, I, I, can't, I can't agree with most African countries culturally. Don't don't uh, accept the girl's child from studying. I don't think that's the case. No, I never uh, said I never said they don't accept them. And I said that the boys on the continent naturally have a head start. I didn't, I didn't know I said that they did. The boys so have a head, natural head start. Yeah. That head start largely can be attributed to, you know, to historical, cultural, and religious reasons why boys naturally on the continent have a head start. But, but how? You have, you have to explain it. You can't just say, Historical cultural, like, like, but I've explained it. But I, but, I, but I have I have explained it. I've talked about how how, for example, how religion, how religion. It's like as if I give example in Islamic societies on on the continent, how girls are married off at a young age, yeah? on how girls. I had there is a belief that girls should just stay at home, you know, do the dishes, take care of a man, and just have kids. That equally hamper. He, Culture is he, that. That's girls. He, there is, especially in Islamic, in a lot of Islamic countries in Africa, there is that belief is there. That's why girls in some countries are married off early, or you don't believe that there are girls who are married off early, or you don't believe that there is a there is a um, culture. Which, which culture is of that? Girl, of child marriage. Hmm? No, no, religion. no the, the question is. I said Islamic in Islamic in countries that that they have Islamic, they have high Islamic. Uh, uh, countries in Africa that have Islamic population, this happens in those areas. It does happen. Not all of them, but in, in a lot of these countries, like I said, countries like Chad, countries like Nigeria, even northern Nigeria, these things happen there. It happens. Okay. For for the for Islam, I can I can I can see that it happens. Yes, because it's happened. There's, there's enough enough examples and data. Even the president of um, Nigeria, I think I heard it was he he, he married a young a young um, girl in her teens as well. Uh, if, if 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 I'm correct, I think I saw that that article. Um, but when it comes to culture, I don't I don't I don't know any culture that emphasizes that from the cultural uh, aspect to say the married girls uh, young in the early teens. I don't know of any culture that, that does that. Um, and from what I know, most cultures send um, their children to school equally, boys and girls. Poverty is more a, a, a very um, pertinent issue to, to, to address where both boys and girls don't go to school, especially in rural areas. Poverty, because if a, a family is poor and you cannot afford to send your children to school, then you're more likely to send them to work or hawk foods around, uh, around town and try to bring some, some revenue back home. Poverty is more important than, than that. And I think if you're not addressing poverty and coming in with these um, programs and only speci focusing specifically on one particular gender, then you're going to in inadvertently leave the other gender out. And if you don't address poverty, then there's still going to be a problem going um, coming in the future for those young, young, young men or young boys. That, that, that's what I worry about. Uh, someone asked a question here. Hold on, let me just look at the chat room. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, hi, I like this one. Uh, Gonio says, UN has no desire to see strong African men take back the continent from their open enemies so they interfere in the social development. Check UN definition of a good citizen. The, the, this is uh, this is one of the, the angles of, of my, my worry in the international, Western international organizations in why they are focusing on because i've seen what it does over in the in western world i've seen the discord it causes but let's just look at some other uh comments since the 50s feminism in general has been counter-revolutionary and uh, thanks is that for that uh want to talk about that one since the feminism has been counter counter-revolutionary to to what Maybe you can elaborate more for us. He said the woman of the Black Panther Party talks about this. Okay. 
uh, Elaine Brown et al. Oh, ch I'll check that out. Um, uh, Coco Barney says, Namdi's talking to Drews. Um, let me see. Militant or aggressive male is not the same thing as patriarchy. Patriarchy is a very specific system. Okay, thanks. Uh, can we get rid of hyper masculine leaders that rule with a gun like Paul Bia and, and Buhari? Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely need to go. That's that was for sure. Um, but let me go back to something on the topic. Um, hold on a second. How can we liberate uh, Africa if women and men are in competition? This is what they did to us in the US as they disenfranchised the men and put women in jobs. What did that do? Divorce. This is another angle I'm talking about that, that I see coming down the line. Um, it's, 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 it's pretty much similar to, to what I, I'm saying that I and, see and, coming. And this, and, and this angle is a valid angle. I said it's a valid, I never, I never disputed that. I said it's a valid angle, but I said these are issues, these are diasporan issues. So I don't, I don't think this is what we are dealing with on the continent at the moment. Our own situation it's on coming. the continent is different. It's coming. This, this is the beginning starting it, it, phase. I'm seeing now. Okay, well, it's, well it's, it's left for us right now. It's left for us right now to look at how. But I wouldn't want a situation whereby, because of our fear of what's happening in the West, we now neglect all these programs that seeks to address, you know, the disadvantages that a lot of women and girls on the continent have. That's my own worry. Yes, these are valid issues. We don't want a situation whereby, you know, we have this gender competition like we see in the West now. And you know the high rate of divorce, and um, you know a lot of broken families that we see in the West, and the competition between men, black black men and black women in, in in the West. Yes, these are these are valid issues, but I think on the continent the issues there is, is different. The issues are mainly how to give girls at least you know some opportunities in addressing some of the challenges that they face. Also, then you know we can deal with the other you know should more. Social economic dynamics between you know male and female much later. Okay, um, yeah, the, the question for me, I think, I'll for Namdi later. Um, yeah, well, what what do I uh, say for neglect of a boy child? What things should happen? Again, as I said um, programs and schemes for girls are fine. That's the thing. There's an issue there. Let's fix it. No problem. It should be led by by us, not other um foreign institutions um but what should be done with there should be equal amount of program not full amount but equal attention to address boy boy issues young young boy child issues i mean the the the, the boy children who who suffer um um enormous amount of um of um i mean the suicide rate already now is, is um the age for suicides are dropping on the problem. So if you say, so let me ask let me ask, let me ask one question if you say this this is going to be equal so do you believe that is this is the question equal. i'm asking you do you believe that do you believe okay fine equal fine i'm i'm up for equal but do you believe that girls naturally and historically on the continent in terms of education in terms of access to social services do you agree that they are at a disadvantage or you don't agree that it's a disadvantage in terms of you so say, say the two two terms again in, in terms, terms of, of in terms of education in terms of access to social services in terms of access to employment in terms of access to leadership positions and all the other social structures you don't think that girls i'm talking about girls i'm talking about women you don't think about girls are not at a natural in africa you're talking about africa you're not talking about in the west you don't think that girls in Africa are at a natural disadvantage? Because I think that I think natural disadvantage. Yeah, that's a natural disadvantage. disadvantage means. Well, for but being I've, girls, I've, I've explained to you that I've, I've talked about the I've talked about the barriers that girls have to un, go through, and I've talked about the some of the social economic factors that hinder girl development of girls. Talk about the barriers. So I that's the reason why I'm asking the question. Okay. My, my, my thing is, I didn't see I it. I talked about the barriers. Do you want me to repeat the barriers? Huh? So I talked about barriers such as poverty. Uh, I talked about the barriers that hinder you know, the, the development of mentioned. girls and their access to. Okay. Let, let, me, let me answer. All the barriers you mentioned exist for boys. 
Yeah. There are boys who come from a very poor background who the parents send them out to work and hawk food. You can go onto all the streets in, in Africa and you're driving your car and there are boys running alongside trying to sell you where. Those are young school age children. It's just it's, what about it's child marriage and early pregnancy? What about child marriage and early yeah, pregnancy? How does that affect boys? How does child marriage and early pregnancy child affect, child affect boys? Okay, child marriage is exclusively for girls. Yes, that's a problem exclusively because that would keep them out. Yes, that one I give. Uh, female genital mutilation, yes, I give that's exclusive for, for girls. But if you just talk about not going, getting into school due to poverty. What about, viol what about violence? What about violence on girls? What about violence on girls on the African continent? So violence such as rape, such as rape on, on the continent. Don't you think that's also a barrier? Don't you think that psychologically, and even mentally, those, those kind of things affect girls on the African continent, considering the fact that the, the security and other, you know, mental health or social service or health services that are supposed to be in place to address or support these girls are literally limited or even non-existent in a lot of countries. Don't you think that also, that also, also that's a barrier for, for a lot of girls on the continent? No, because I, I don't think that applies to, to them being able to go to school. How, how does rape stop you from going to school? How do you, uh, so you don't you don't think that there are psychological um, impact? You don't you don't think that women on the good side there's a lot of trauma associated with rape for women for girls? Yeah, there is. No, but that, 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 that's not connected to this to this conversation though. This conversation is about is is um, is connected because these are some of the barriers. That's some of the barriers. So no, but, but, but no. Tell barriers. me how, how is how, how how does rape connect with Opportunities to go to, to I don't know, to go to school or to to, to get better uh, opportunities of employment. I don't I don't understand how. So in school? terms of security, so if the girls are not, if the, if, the, if, the, if they are not in a yes, then if they are not in society, if they are not in an environment where they can feel safe. So, for example, the kidnapping of those, um, the kidnapping of those school girls in Nigeria, um, the Chibok girls. The kidnapping of those two girls, this terrorist uh, Boko Haram went there and just kidnapped those girls and just took them away. We don't know what those girls have, have gone through. Yes, some of them were returned, but some of them got pregnant, some were raped, some suffered all kinds of trauma. So you don't think that those things are, are part of the barriers and some of the challenges that girls face on the continent. Remember, that wasn't just the first time. Uh, I think... After shortly after those girls were kidnapped, another set of girls that we also were kidnapped again, and this is just this is not an isolated incident. This is something that's prevalent on the continent. So you don't think that those can be barriers? Those girls yeah. did not sit I, for their exams. They didn't write their the exams. They did not take their exams. If you remember, they did not take their exams. They lost close to two to three years of their lives in captivity. You don't think that that's a barrier as well? Um, well, when we talk about barriers, I don't, I don't think it's fair to just name that one incident and place it as a barrier that's affecting the whole continent uh, on a regular basis. And, and that justifies all these schemes and all these international organizations to be there for 20 years plus. No, I, I'm talking about the endemic issues that have been ongoing. Um, so I understand the things about child marriage. I understand the things about putting their children to work and not letting them go to school with uh, all that. But I won't really say that because of girls being kidnapped from that school, um, these are things stopping girls from going to school. It's not like all, all schools in the northern part of, of the hemisphere or sub-Saharan Africa, et cetera, uh, the girls just being kidnapped from school. I, I don't think that's 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 um, that's the situation at all. I'm, I'm talking about the infrastructural things that, that prevent them. I, I If they're cultural things, um, let's say a girl only goes to the primary school and after that she has to get married or has to stay home and help the mother, has to go to the shop or store, has to farm, and there's no interest in furthering their education. And therefore, they don't also get into the into I don't know, uh, higher levels of employment, government, uh, leadership positions. I understand that. But what I'm, I'm saying, and I'm bringing back to the point, is that so many of these things that we're talking about, girls, they also affect boys. Boys are also being put out to work and not being allowed to focus on school. Boys are being drafted into militant organizations. Boys are being uh, um, 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 left out of um, 
of, of, of opportunities as well. It, it, and then there's and it, there's no organization that I could find that has any scheme or agenda for boys. And and I know you're saying they have a natural advantage, but not all societies are like that. I don't think all societies are like that. I I, I think they're not as many, even though you showed the illustration from what I, I've seen and what, my experience, girls go to school just as much as boys, but when there's poverty involved, then it's, it's, it's a big drop. It's a big drop that you don't see as many as many girls in there. And then there are, there's obviously the cultural aspect, some, or I'd say religious aspect, not necessarily cultural aspect, there's a religious aspect when it comes to Islam. That yes, girl brides are younger and that should stop. Um, Female genital mutilation should should stop as well to be abolished. And many countries are taking that, those steps. Um, but I, I just think you can't run a society by focusing on one gender and not the other, and at the same time, in the same breath, espouse gender equality. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's what I'm saying. I can't really see how that makes sense. You know, I really just can't see how that makes sense. You can't espouse gender. I'm equality. not sure they're running society based on. I'm not sure they're running the society based on one gender. I think what they're trying to do is just to address the deficiency. That's all. But again, I think your point is largely mainly around the much wider implication. You see what's happening in the West. You see how it's destroying society over here. Are you afraid that what we see on the continent might be in the early stages of what we are what we are currently experiencing here in the West? And I and I get that. But I'm just saying that right now, I feel just think the focus right now, it does. You know, providing opportunities for these girls. That's what I think the, the, the focus should be right now. Exactly. They're, they're, they're calling the child marriage what, what is really it's, it's pedophilia. Exactly. It's pedophilia. That's marry, marrying off underage girls. It's nothing less than it's pedophilia. I agree. That's the amorous way of calling it child marriage. It's not child marriage. These girls are, these people are actually pedophiles. You know, and, you know, and they're getting away with it. You know, they marry these girls. Underage girls and you know and, and, and they start having kids with, with these girls and nobody says anything. Some of them even have laws. They have like Sharia law, which are well, hmm. they have like Sharia law in in certain parts of, of, of the continent that seeks to protect men. That's you know that take you know take pride in in, uh, in marrying marrying your underage girls. You know these are these are the, these are the, these are the challenges. These are the challenges. Are part of the there, there is no law. I, I don't know if you are aware of any that uh, seeks to marry off. Underage boys. Are you aware of any and, and young boys get married too? Underage boys. Young boys huh? Sorry, young boys. I think young young Muslim boys get married early. Yeah, they get married early, but I mean underage. You know, some of them get married underage girls even as early as twelve. My young girls as as early as twelve, fifteen. Now, I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe of uh, any boy. Who is on that fifteen? Who are, who has been forced into some kind of like child marriage? Have you heard of anything, boy? Have you heard? You know, these are the issues. Are, that's why I talked about the, the cultural and religious reasons why you know boys have a natural advantage. Okay, see, but I agree, and and, that, and that's wrong. I'm just saying, you know, bo boys get raped, right? And the chances of boys being raped and abused. And for them to actually come out with it is actually much tougher. So a lot of young boys internalize these things. And, and that's why I, I mentioned the increase in suicide. The, 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 the pressure that some young boys are, are going through um, are not being acknowledged. There's nothing addressing them. It's like they're just left the wayside. And, and uh, um, um, drug addiction is, is as well quite the highest with boys. Uh, we know there was a big epidemic of um, what's that codeine um, recently that, that swept uh, a, lot, a lot of the African continent. This was largely with boys or, or young adolescent men. Um, the, the, there are things that just not being addressed, and there are not, no strategic policies focusing on boys, and and that's not going to have anything great for the future of, of, of the continent. If you now have all these programs targeting girls, to, to which which are fine, but elevates and gets them to this place where they are a very good functioning part of society and then the boys now don't match up. Then what happens, as I was talking about, what happens when those two need to pair bond? Those two need to now create the next generation of society. I'm worried about what's happening here being recreated over there. 
Um, let's go through some more comments. So the Oprah built a school in South Africa and did nothing for the boys. I believe it was deliberate on her behalf. Yeah, yeah that's, I've seen a lot of those things. I mean, the issues to learn from the diaspora used as an experiment to capture the constant. Nazis learned from what the West did to the native people after the Jew Holocaust. Thank you, uh, Doug. So you're saying the problem is manhood training in Africa that is neglecting some boys, but that's down to men as men train boys into men, not women. Uh, I agree with the last part. Yep, true. They are neglecting, and, and yeah, it's 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 a sad one because maybe they're, maybe they're just leaving them to to their devices, saying get on with it. You know, your men, your men, just get on with it. <laughs> we don't need to create anything for you. We don't need, don't need the program, don't need any 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 addressing. Um, but I just I just I worry for this coming gender war. Maybe that's what I should have titled it. You know, the 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 coming uh, gen, 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 potential gender war that might come on the continent. With the only increase. gender war, the only gender war that is coming is the gender war in the West. For now, in mm. Africa, there's no gender war. I just think that this is your concern. No, just last you did what you see the West. Yo, I don't think it's gonna come. That's if that's my own opinion. I don't think it's gonna come. But simply because pro programs have been introduced to address um, um the inequalities that exist for women, doesn't mean that a gender war gender war. When you look at Asia, is there a gender war incoming in Asia? What's gender not, war coming in Asia? Is that just they're not sorry in Asia. They're, they're not doing the same thing in Asia. They are doing it in Asia. They're doing it in Asia. They're doing it in South in, 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 in um, um, South Asian countries, especially in South Asia, Southern Asian countries like Bangladesh, in India, Nepal. These are all programs are going on there in Pakistan. They're going on there. It's happening there. Mm -hmm. But is there going to be some kind of like gender war? There? No. This is just Gen what we're program. all these things are just what we're seeing here in the West. That's all. I don't think anything like that will happen on the continent. That's it. I mean, you can have your fears, you can have your concern. That's fine. But I don't think there's anything that's going to happen like that. Well, it's it's, it's been shown where, where where they've had these programs for gender issues that it's always happened. So I, I can't see why it won't happen. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm sticking I'm sticking to the topic, which is what providing access for girls to have you know maximize and develop their potential. That's what I think the topic was about. So providing access for them, and I am fully in support of that. So more girls in STEM, more girls in the sciences, more girls in engineering, uh, more girls in um, leadership position, you know, to 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 dilute the, the heavy presence of men in leadership position, uh, more girls in, um, you know, in, in, in our position, you know. I think that, you know, we need that balance. There has to be some form of balance. It has to be, you know, an active contribution of, of for, for women in the in, in the society, you know. So I am fully in support of that. No, but we're not talking about being in support of yes. that. We're, 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 we're talking about Western agencies doing this. That that that's the point. Western agencies doing this. They're the ones. But they're who not are, only Western agencies that are doing this. That's what I'm saying. If you're saying you're putting on Western agencies, they're not only Western agencies that are doing it. They are local. No, they, they are. National, they, they, they are international. Okay, they are local. They are no. local. No, no, it's no, not no. just Look, the United Nations. It's not just the United Nations. It's not just UNESCO. Okay, I, I just I don't want you to just zero in on 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 the Western uh, organizations. I think it would be unfair. So yes, we have UNESCO. We have UN. We have all these you know international bodies that are doing all these things on the continent. But it's not just that. We have local. Remember, we have local. We have local. We have national. We have national and we have continental. I told you the African Union has a program, has programs like that. So what are you going to say about that? Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, here, this is just some of them. Action Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Action Aid. Yeah, we are aware. UNESCO. Uh, we are aware. We this one, I okay, agree. This one, Asia. I, again, um, I agree. But I'm saying that is it just only the Western one that are doing it? That's the question I'm asking. It's not just um, the Western. We have continental bodies that are equally doing the same thing. It's not just the Western one now. It's not just the Western one. We have continental bodies that are doing. We have national bodies that are doing. It. We have local bodies that are doing this. We have it. Yes, but those local bodies are following 
sustainable development goals which are set by Western agencies or set by the United Nations. These things are always from sustainable development goals. That's where they come from. And, those, and so I've said before, sustainable development goals are agenda driven by the West to, to construct or formulate societies in certain ways. And I believe that it suits their global agenda. That's where I see this from. You're, you're not talking about, it's, it's not a question of just access to, to, um, to, to education and, and access to good healthcare. It is about gender. That's what they're targeting. They're targeting gender, which is basically changing the fabric of society. And each society are the ones who have the right to decide how their society is going to be. You cannot allow another foreign entity to come and tell you how your gender construct will be. And one of them, I'll, I'll read it out to you what they're, if you can see this here, it says to encourage more women in leadership positions to help change social and gender norms and, and act as a model for female students. The report finds the negative stereotyping of women are suited to be leaders are reinforced by scarcity of female teachers in higher education. Globally, women make up 94% of teachers in pre-primary, uh, but only 43% in, in tertiary education. But the thing is, these issues exist still in the West and hasn't been addressed. So how can these Western organizations be coming into Africa to try to change these norms? They still exist in their societies. That, that, that's what I'm saying. They exist in their societies till this day. I'm sure most people who ever went to university will say that a lot of the university lecturers were still men, even to this day. I know most of mine were. I don't know who, who else um, uh, in, in, in the chat room has anything to, to say about that, but I, 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 I don't see this as a benevolent um, endeavor, um, even though it's, it's laudable. But when you're trying to change the fabric of society and create a gender um, premise, I, th I think that I just think that's a problem, especially when you're not addressing the other gender. If you're trying to create gender equality, then you have to address both. You have to talk about both. And no one's talking about the boys. No one's addressing the boys. The boys have issues too. Like, where is the, okay, show me the AU one. You said AU is local. Show me the AU one for boys. So I can find it. I can check right here now. There's no AU one for boys. So is that saying boys are all, all fine, boys are all okay, boys have no issues, let's move on. Is that what, is that what it means then? Boys have a natural advantage. It's just like saying, um, you know, this is like, uh, what they call it? Uh, what's this program that was introduced in, in South Africa and I think in the US to address the uh, um, racial gap? What do they call that program again? Um, the racial equality. What's it called again? That program. I forgot the name of the program. It's a program that was introduced in South Africa. Sorry? What, 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 was, it intended, what was it intended for? So I just address the racial inequality that exists between white and black. I think it's just almost similar. Also, okay, let me use another narrative. Let me use another example. It's just like you know the EFF program. What is the EFF doing? The EFF is fighting for what? Black empowerment, right? In South Africa, they are, they are fighting yeah. to address the the, um, the racial and in, in, income inequality between black and white South Africans, right? But they are focused exclusively on black. Right, they're mm -hmm. not saying that. Oh, let, let's, let's let's do things equally. No, they say that you know, white people have a natural. They've had a head start, right? They've had a head start and they had a natural advantage over black South Africans. So their own programs, their own policies are geared towards what addressing that deficit. That 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 deficit. So it's the same thing on the African continent. Boys have a natural advantage. I know you don't like you, you know you don't you don't agree with that, but it's true. They have a natural advantage. So these programs are just geared towards, you know, helping the girls to, you know, to to come up a little bit. And so let's go up a little bit. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, it may be hard for you to find any program, but maybe I, I don't even think anyone exists. Um, any program that is just catered towards boys, you know. But I think maybe that's largely to the fact that boys have a natural advantage in the way the societies on the continent is structured. Yeah, 
I don't really agree about the natural advantage thing. If, if you show that that uh, graph you had once, once more again about about globally, about countries, could you just bring it up one, one more time? Yeah. Because if you look at Africa, it, it's, okay. it's not it's not bad compared to the West. Even. Because if we're saying the natural advantage, it's we have to lowest. Compare it. Africa yeah. is the lowest in the world. It's the lowest in terms of. Okay, okay. Bring, bring, bring it up. Okay. Bring it up. Because interpretation of some of this data is, is, is quite, you know, pivotal. Okay. You see it. Okay, could you scroll up? Could you scroll up? I need, I need to see what, what it talks about. Go up a little bit, a little bit more. Let's see the, the heading of the. Uh, share of male and female students. It's actually different data. Right. Across to Latin America, 12% for young men. 30% for young women, mainly in the African state. Uh, African rates, 14 and 9%, respectively. Okay. Um, so, 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 so look at different regions. Middle East, North Africa, Latin America, Sub Saharan Africa. Can you see? Scroll down a little bit. South Asia is even lower. Okay, but 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 South Asia is even lower. Hold on. Asian countries like Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. Yeah. But Namdi, the difference between men and women are yeah. the, are the lowest of all of them. Besides Latin America and Caribbean, the rest have huge disparities. Sub-Saharan Africa doesn't. By this graph you just shown, it's very tiny. The, but you get what I'm saying? It shows. It shows. I know, but it shows. It shows that the men, the ratio for the men is a lot higher than that of the female. And you see well, it. But I think in general, it always well, will be. With the exception of Latin America. With the exception of Latin America and the Caribbean, where you have the ratio for female higher than that for men, in in, in most part of the world, even including in Europe, yes, the ratio for men is higher than that of the women. Okay, so, so, what, so, so what's the problem? This is just in one area now. You want to zero in. This is just in one area. Let me ask you one question. So, so let me ask you one question. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So if there is a program that is geared towards addressing this gap, this this deficiency between male and female. You say deficiency in Africa. Why do you call it Who's, Why is it a deficiency yes. to begin with? I've uh, explained the reason. I've explained the barriers. Your home, your home is not going around. There's a lot of barriers that that reason why. There's a reason why. It's not that men boys are naturally more intelligent than girls. No, I think we can agree on that. But there is a reason why the, the, the ratio for that of boys is higher. There is a reason for that. So what we want to do is to reduce that barrier, reduce that barrier, and provide access for girls. Is there anything wrong okay. in that? So the, the barriers that exist in Europe and Central Asia and East Africa and the Pacific and Middle East and North Africa. Oh, I, I don't know about that. I'm not concerned about I'm, I'm more focused on this is an African-centered program. I don't care what's going on in Europe. I'm more focused on what's going on in Africa. That's all. Okay, what I see here is if all those barriers are so endemic, this graph would be representative of that and it would be much, much less. What I see is more, I'm not saying those barriers don't exist to those people who it affects. But what, I, what I see is when we, neglecting, this is why I'm talking about the equality aspect, when neglecting what a man and a woman is, in, in general, across the world, and in particular, probably African countries, the man is the provider, right? So it is more likely that he would have to go out and get further education to provide for the family. Yes or no? So, so what so okay, if, he would be further in huh? So is that the perception? So women should just stay at home? That's what I said. Just, you know, and just take care of all the business. Those who subscribe to education would be more men because it gets them better opportunities to be able to provide as their jobs as providers. If you now have equality, as you're saying, women have just the same. We want to see that graph equal. 
what what do you think that future is going to look like? What what do you think the f fabric of of, of man, man and woman or family or household will look like? Because it doesn't exist anywhere in the world. So why are we trying to engender that? I'm not saying don't address. Why are we trying to? The is that what you're saying? Why no. are we trying to remove the barrier? Because there's a reason why. Why are you trying to make the graph equal? Because it doesn't exist. Why anywhere. are you trying to reduce the barrier? To answer my question. We are trying to make the graph equal because we want to level the playing field. We are trying right. to we are trying to make the graph equal because we want to level the playing field. Don't you think so? Don't you think the playing field should be level? Don't you think that the barriers that hinder people from man, from you know for attaining their full potential? Don't you think those barriers should be removed? Let's not talk about the barriers. Let's say yes. No, Africa, that's the barrier. You are saying you say why do we, why do we seek to make the barriers? I'm saying that we are seeking to make the barriers equal because we want to remove the barriers. We are seeking that's to make my question is why do, want, why do you want equal? We're all educated to the same level at the same point. That graph is exactly equal because equality is the point. Why do you want that to happen? And why do you think that that's a good because thing? Because we want to because because people don't it because there are barriers that hinder there is, there is hindering a particular gender from attaining their full potential. There is there are barriers that's hindering a particular gender, and this gender in particular is are, are girls. So if you are saying that we should leave the if we leave the we should leave the graph, we should leave the disparity the way it is. That means you are saying that those barriers should remain in place. No, you're, you're, you're twisting my question. My question is very explicit. Forget the yes, barriers. Yes, I'm answering your, I'm answering your question. I'm answering your question. It's very straightforward. The, the gap, the reason why the gap, the graph is unequal is because of barriers. One of the that's, reasons. That's my opinion because the rest of the world has the same thing. Even even countries that don't have barriers. Okay, let's look at the UK. Please, let's let's look at the UK because we can say the UK doesn't have those barriers, right? Let's see if the UK has the same thing. Like I said, I don't care. I don't care about. I don't care. I don't care about the UK. I don't care about the world. This is again, this is an African-centered program of focus yeah, but, more on what issues that African. No, but you brought, that's you brought a graph. If you can only know that something is wrong if you compare it to something else. So that's why I'm asking. If you're looking at Africa, why is that graph wrong? It's only wrong because you've compared it to something else. Why is it wrong? It can't be wrong just because it's on its own in isolation. We can't know it's wrong. It can only be wrong because you've compared it to something else. And you showed a graph with other countries and that and all other regions. That's why it's wrong. So why what is so, right? So essentially you're saying that the barriers should remain, the gaps in, in place should remain. There's no need to attain. What you're saying in summary, and I just, I'm just helping you. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but what you're saying essentially is that the gap should remain. There should be no, there shouldn't be any attempt to uh, to address any kind of equality in those fields. We should just leave it the way it is because obviously that could have wider societal implications. So we we'll just leave it the way it is and not rock the boat and let the barriers, um, and the barriers that are currently in place should just remain the way it is. After all, you don't even believe that you don't even think that barriers are even barriers that even exist because you think that boys equally have equal or even the same challenges. So you should just leave things the way they is and just continue, right? That's what yeah, you're that's saying. Right. In some, you're not saying it directly. That's what you're saying in some. Yeah. Let, let the barriers, let the barriers remain the way they are. Let the current um, challenges and the obstacles just keep the way it is. No point funding all these programs. Because they may have sinister agenda, they may have sinister agenda, they might seek to alter the gender balance on the continent. So all these programs are largely suspicious. Leave things the way they are. There's no point having any kind of uh, you know parity in terms of educational access to education, access to social services, and access to you know leadership positions. Just leave it the way they are, and uh, let's just continue from there. Finish. Okay. What, what, what I'm saying is, if all the barriers were removed today, you would still see a gap in men and women. It will never change. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You will never get parity, ever. So the idea of equality is, is a farce. That's my point. It's a farce. I'm not saying you should address issues of those who genuinely want to go to school, those who genuinely want to pursue their dream, 
those who generally want to not be intimidated or have anything to affect them, yes, address those things. But I'm saying what are you, the goals of pumping money to, to equality is a farce because nowhere in the world have you seen that graph equal. It will never be. That's my point. My point is it will never be. So we should stop looking for an ideal of trying to make it equal. There's a reason why, in general, women are not in the Some countries stop. on the continent have already seen that. Let me make my point. There's a reason women are not in STEM. It's not because they are being stopped from STEM. Because in the West, women are still not in STEM. And there are no barriers. It's not something women go into. Women are not, not stopped from being in STEM in the West. So you can't, what I'm talking about, you're, they're constructing or forcing some of these things on the continent through these organizations. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm saying boys just need to be addressed as well. But you can't force, um, you can't force equality. That's what I'm saying. You cannot force equality. Remove things that are going to affect people. You cannot force equality. I don't expect that graph to ever be equal. That, 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 that's my main point there. As far as, so that graph, I don't, I don't think that it, you're going to bridge it, bridge the gap to an equal point. It's never going to happen. This has never happened anyway. Well, I think, I think, and this is why I think where you are wrong. I think that the graph has already been equal, and even girls have already exceeded the um, um, have exceeded the graph in even some African countries. And I, I think I showed you. So if you want to see a more detailed breakdown, I'll show you a more detailed breakdown. Just have a look. Have a look at this data. I remember we're, we're, we're aggregating our first graph the continent, right? Yes. So if you look at a more detailed breakdown here, you will see countries like Angola. Look at Angola. Look at the male and female ratio. You see? It's not, it's not equal. Show me, I'm saying it's never going to be that, that for girls has even exceeded that for boys. Look at it. Look at it now. This, is the, data. this is the same data for secondary school enrollments for vocational programs. It's the same data. So it's still that same data. Yeah, it's still this data, this one. Yeah, it's still this data, but a more, you know, detailed breakdown of what's going on in, in, in you know, in specific countries. So you look at the data for Angola, you can see. Yeah, look at that for South Africa, it's almost equal. Yeah, well, you can, well, the boys are almost a little bit higher. Ethiopia, exactly, look at Ethiopia, look at Ethiopia. Look at, look at that for Ethiopia. Look at Ethiopia. You see? Yes, the vast majority of the continent. Yes, the vast majority. Look at South Tome and Principe. Look at South Tome and Principe. Look. Look at Cote d'Ivoire. See? Look at Central African Republic. Look at Guinea. Guinea, West Africa. Look at Senegal. Look at Lesotho. You see? So it defeats that your notion of. Um, no, but uh, what? what, what? I mean, I said equality does not exist. That's my point. That's my point. You, all, you, all you showed was disparity. You never get equality. That's my point. That's what I said. You never get equality. Well, I'm, 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 uh, maybe we're talking about two different things. I'm not talking about equality. I'm talking about addressing. So maybe I think we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about addressing what? The um, educational deficiency that exists between boys and girls. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about equality here. No, but, but, but I'm, I'm talking about equality because I'm that's talking what about I'm, okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm talking about addressing the deficiency that exists in terms of access to education, vocational education that exists between boys and girls in, in various African countries. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about gender, I'm not talking about um, a, uh, equality here in terms of how it exists in broader society. So let's just be clear so that you don't misunderstand me. I'm That's talking good. about vocational education in African countries as, ex as it exists between boys and girls and the deficiency in those areas. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about broader gender, uh, broader gender equality issues as we know it in the West. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about the West. I'm talking about Africa. But that, 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 what your graph is gender... Is, is gender based, so it's, it, 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 my, it's my graph is my graph is showing vocational educational enrollment between boys and girls in different African countries. Okay, and, and, and by the way, that, that's not formal normal education, that's just vocational. That graph is just for vocational. We haven't talked yeah, about that's vocational. Yeah. 
So that, that's that's not the whole picture, basically. Just to say that that's not the whole picture. That's vocational. Yeah, yeah that's not the whole picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just yes, that's not the whole picture. Yes, yeah. Okay, what does um, what do the rest of you think? Uh, let me. What do the rest of you think? So let me see. And going says this is exactly how they destroyed families in the West. We wanted girls to be trained to work in factories while they sent the men off to war. And Ronnie B says, I think Namdi has been sold into the Western rhetoric about everywhere else but their own backyard. He uh, said, Papi said they are, and also with Namdi, it's a mistake not to learn from history, even in the UK and US, to show you what is coming your way. Um, for other points, and if you wanted to respond, uh, male youth have to go to elder men, uh, leaders, and say, Father, you have neglected us. The man changed like the brave young Nigerians in the end of the protest. Yeah, yep, yeah, I agree. They, I mean, most of the continent is under underdeveloped, um, not much infrastructure, so there hasn't been any jobs, any training. And those who even go to university come out and can't find any jobs. So it's left a lot of young men um having to do other jobs like you know uh, just um, menial jobs with their degrees and not found anywhere to go so th that is another issue in, it, in itself um and the final one i think statistics don't always reflect the reality on the ground you know uh yeah that, that was a statistic about vocational education um, um across the continent now, another thing i wanted to add is some countries have a larger female population than men. So we should be looking at that and juxtaposing with any data we show. I know Rwanda has a huge, uh, the population is way more than men, the disparity from women to men. And around those regions that had a lot of wars um, during that region, so the Soto and all the other ones you, you mentioned, I think that's the same situation there. A lot more women than men. Um, so we need to dig into more of the data before we we interpret. Um, but largely, uh, just to round up, I'll just give my thoughts and you give yours. I, I do think um, any issues that affect young girls should be addressed. Um, uh, issues that all those international organizations uh, are supporting to get them into education, to give them access to leadership positions, which just may start from education anyway. Um, I do think it should be more run by the government because when foreign entities start driving an agenda or over um, represented in that particular agenda of policy, then they're able to manipulate the narrative. Um, and I think it has a potential of setting uh, those women against the men in the future. I think it's able to, it has a potential of creating a disparity of the genders where the women no longer see the men as valuable and by doing so um, there is this conflict that would because they no longer look to their men for those positions it's almost like a kind of mandatory process where they are not uh, um, in unison with them which is what i've seen here in the west at the same time for the boys the specific issues that affect the boys and i don't see any kind of um, programs for them. Um, I think both need to be addressed and programs to encourage um, both genders um, to express and, and grow at, at their own rates, addressing specific issues and being both valuable members of society. Uh, I don't think we can address one without the other because society comprises of both. Um, so yeah, that, that's just my, my takeaway from that. Um, I know you, you you have to say about it, Namdi, before we close. Yeah, so I mean, my final point will be, I, I, again, I understand your concerns. We've seen how, uh, we've seen how, uh, you know, I understand where you're coming from in terms of, you know, the um, the gender the gender dynamics that currently exist in the West and the, the destruction that comes with it. Um, but I, um, I am of the opinion that when it comes to Africa, I think that, um, girls in particular are at a natural disadvantage and i think that in terms of uh, opportunities i think that um, programs at the local and national and even the continental level should work in sync 
in addressing this um, disadvantage that girls have on the continent. So a uh, uh, disadvantage that we we'll see them have attain their full potential, whether educationally, socially, and even at the leadership level, where we don't currently see quite a lot of women. Um, yeah, again, I understand where you're coming from in terms of um, you know, much broader application. And uh, you know the the some of the agendas, some of the sinister agendas, some of these international organisations that are operated on the continent may have, and the, you know the much futuristic implication they could have, and the tensions that that could result in the male and female um, relationship. So I quite understand that, but I think that first and foremost, for Africa to actually man maximise its full potential, the you know the deficiency that exists and the opportunities. What a lot of opportunities should be provided for girls in particular. Okay, yeah, yeah. just just carry the boys along. But um, anyway, well, thank you all for joining in. Um, and um, yeah, we should be back uh, shortly. Uh, let us know any other subjects you want us to, to discuss, to talk about. Uh, if you want to support, support by. Um, Cash app, uh, pound sign, dark channel. And at the same time, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and we should see you. Uh, I've got one more, oh, one more comment. Many of Nigerian male cousins at the university became professional couch potatoes. Let me show it. As there was no job at the end of the university. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are just doing transportation and um, it was a menial job, and it's, it's, it's a bit sad. And, um, yeah, again, I said it was an epidemic of people taking drugs at some point, you know, and there's suicides coming in and all psychological issues. Um, that's quite endemic. These are things that, you know, need to be, you know, addressed at the continental level as well. But it just seems no one really cares about the, the male child. You know, society is made up of both, not taking anything away from the female child, but you can't just have a, a decade or two general focusing on the female child and not the male child um anyway thank you all for your comments uh when african men take back the true leadership role the girls which is fine no point in girls learning a trade if they can only use it in chinese factories uh, good point good point and with that we'll be out thanks for watching see you later <laughs>